Hi everyone, welcome back to our last session of the 8 Pixel 360 Virtual Expo, the April series. While this is our last session for today, it's probably the most interesting one. I'm joined by a panel of passionate individuals who are here to talk about one pressing topic, the pollution of our ocean. So before we begin, let me just quickly introduce them. So first we have Simon Christopher, who is a zoologist and the founder of Blue Hope. Joining them, we have Hazel Oakley, the Managing Director of TRAC, the award-winning marine conservation organization based in Sabah. We have Mohinda Charles, who is the Project Manager at Red Rock Initiatives for Sustainable Development, which supports community-driven and locally-led environmental conservation. Then we have Bizimungu Joseph, the Executive Director of ABN, and we also have Mutumba Fezel, the Director of NP Junior Rangers Uganda Limited an environmental conservation nonprofit organization that promotes a culture of environmental and heritage stewardship. Our last guest is Daniel Scheller, the project manager at One Earth, One Ocean. Right, so I'm gonna hand it over to our wonderful panel here today to begin the session. I'll hand it over to Simon, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kushi. Hello everyone, great to see you all. Good evening, good morning, whatever time of uh, the day it is, wherever you are. Um, Good afternoon. I'm, and um, we're delighted to have people from all over the world who are joined in their love of the ocean and the desire to protect the ocean, starting off by um, trying to tackle plastic pollution. So my name is Simon Christopher. I'm, um, I'm the founder of Blue Hope, and I'm in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah, East Malaysia. And um, we have been uh, running Blue Hope for the last couple of years from the launch on um, World Ocean Day in 2020. And for the last two years, we have been um, creating a new platform called um, Saba Plastic Neutral. And that is essentially looking to tackle plastic pollution full on and um, Sabah is a state in East Malaysia, Malaysian Borneo. It's the most biodiverse state in Malaysia. And we, I have been here for 25, 26 years now, making uh, programs for the BBC National Geographic Discovery. And we have decided with uh, myself and my colleagues, we've decided to tackle plastic full on by starting Sabah Plastic Neutral. And what we are about to do is to make the capital city, Kota Kinabalu, plastic neutral in three years. By the end of 2020, um, um, 2024, and then make Sabah, which is the state, about four, four and a half million people, plastic neutral, and then ultimately Borneo, plastic neutral, by the end of 2030, UNESCO Ocean Decade or UN restoration decade. So we've got a long, uh, a long journey ahead, an exciting journey ahead, but we're looking forward to sharing um, everyone's stories with, uh, with our viewers because it's a, very, um, it's a very unified and an important global movement. And I'm now delighted to see that Monica has joined us. Monica is, is my um, partner with, um, with Blue Hope Sabah and Sabah Plastic Neutral, and also our community director. Love to have you here, Monica. You're on mute now, but just say hi to everyone. Hi, hi everybody. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Hazel. Hi, Muinda. Hi, Busy and Matumba. Hi. It's me. You see me online. Um, that I am the um the person sent you the the email to invite you guys here. Yeah, good to see you all online today. So you'll hear from um, Monica later, but she is um, my core um, uh, co-founding partner for Saba Plastic Neutral. And she's absolutely key because she spent the last 20 years diving and connecting with all communities around Saba. And so it's, a, it's an international platform, but Mon uh, Monica and her network and, and the divers and, and all the marine lovers and nature lovers around Sabah, uh, we are creating a movement called Sabah Plastic Neutral. So um, I think that's enough about Blue Hope and Sabah Plastic Neutral. Before I pass 
the baton to to Daniel to talk about um, One Earth, One Ocean, um, who we are delighted to be partnering up with now. I'm sorry that Gunter Bonin isn't here, but um, he's represented by Daniel. Uh, we have recently been introduced to uh, One Earth, One Ocean by the German ambassador here, and we're looking to kickstart uh, monthly beach cleans. And so the first beach clean that we did with last month with International Solidarity Beach Clean is what this webinar is all about. So before we move on to that, I'd just like to play a video, which is um, um, one of our biggest supporters and um, a big name globally is Sir David Attenborough, who has been very supportive of our project. And we have a little message here from him for Malaysia, which is the, the overarching message, which is not really just specific to Malaysia. This is a global message, but this one is, is specific to Malaysia and for our Sabah Plastic Neutral. So it's about a two and a half minute video just with Sir David talking about plastic and the relevance to Malaysia and Sabah. And then after that, uh, we'll pass over to you, Daniel. Um, with that said, El France, over to you. If you could play the video, please. Thank you. Hello, Malaysia. My name is David Attenborough, and I'm a naturalist. And I've traveled around the world making films for more than 65 years. Once we thought that the world's oceans were so vast and its inhabitants so infinitely numerous that nothing we did could affect them. But now we are seeing a new side to the oceans. As a filmmaker, I've been hugely privileged to travel the world and celebrate the wonders beneath the ocean's surface, including off Malaysia, one of my favorite places of all. Sabah and Sarawak have over 550 species of coral. Peninsular Malaysia, sea grass beds, their very own spectacular plants and other marine life, critical for the survival of your endangered dugongs and sea turtles. But in recent years, I've witnessed firsthand that plastic waste is destroying marine life the world over. What's so tragic about plastic pollution is that it is so totally unnecessary. The plastic in our oceans should never have found its way there in the first place. A staggering 8 million tonnes of plastic now ends up in our oceans every year. This is a disaster. Blue Planet 2's crew saw plastic everywhere they filmed. And once it's in the sea, it stays there and it doesn't go away. But this catastrophic damage to our oceans is reversible and nature can recover if we give it a chance. While the actions of just one of us, you, may seem to be so very small with really no effect at all, in fact, knowing there are hundreds of thousands of people all doing the same thing is starting to have a truly positive effect. Every single one of us now needs to think, and I mean really think, about how we use plastic. So, I strongly urge you all to treat plastic with care, because if it reaches the environment, it will stay there for a very long time, if not forever, and ultimately affect us all. Every one of us should be extremely proud of their natural heritage and passionate to protect and conserve it and ensure that it remains around for future generations. We all have a responsibility to care for our planet. The future of humanity and indeed all life on Earth now depends on us. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you, Sir David. So no one quite says it as well as Sir David. And uh, of course, those words are relevant to all of us. So with that said, over to you, Daniel. I'm really keen if you could uh, share, tell us more about uh, One Earth, One Ocean and, um, and this particular important beach clean that we all uh, got involved in last month. Thank you. Of course, I will. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Um, I'm Daniel Shela from One of One Ocean. I am the project manager here in the Philippines uh, with our newest project, uh, which is the Circular Explorer, which is that ship. Well, that ship is only a part of the project, of course. 
and we are uh, reassembling that right now in Subic Bay, and it will be in service very soon. Now, to One Earth, One Ocean, I would like to show you a presentation. All right. So, One Earth, One Ocean was founded in 2011 by Günther Ponin. And it basically started with a little float or a little boat on a river in Germany near Munich. Um, meanwhile, um, One Earth, One Ocean is an international organization with uh, projects in Egypt, in Africa, in Indonesia, Cambodia, in Brazil, in the Philippines, and in Germany, well, in, in Europe, uh, one can say. And um, it basically started because Günther Bonin, as a passionate sailor, was completely shocked by a carpet of a marine litter, which he found during one of his tours. And uh, we, well, he developed an idea um, to clean the oceans. And this idea is the, uh, the marine waste, uh, the, the marine litter cleanup concept. And um, it basically consists out of uh, three ships uh, or three types of ships, uh, which can then be uh, set in place as they are needed. Uh, the small ships are the so-called sea hamsters, and um, they are perfect for river mouths, for shallow waters, to collect uh, marine litter and also um, to reach the shores and as, as a landing vessel, if you want so. The sea cows are a little bit uh, bigger. Um, they are aluminium catamarans. And um, they are suitable for um, also for shallow waters, but um, also for open waters already and for, for bay areas, for example. And uh, the sea cows, which is, by the way, also uh, like a, 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 the name is the dugon. Uh, basically, it's a sea cow is the name, uh, seku is the name in the German name for dugon. And uh, they already have uh, quite a bit of a capacity and they can clean up large areas very efficiently. And then, of course, we have the sea elephant. The sea elephant is not realized yet, but it will be realized hopefully very soon. Um, it is basically um, a big ship, uh, a former container ship, which can recycle all the marine litter on board, meaning um, all the plants which are needed to clean it, to, uh, to shredder it, and to to, to recycle it into a new raw material or to transform it into, uh, uh, into oil, back into oil uh, uh, as a conversion, uh, pyrolysis, um, that can all be done on board of the sea elephant. So with that little fleet, with a fleet of a few sea hamsters and sea cows, uh, one could basically clean really, really huge areas, um, especially uh, if they have a very high degree of pollution. So with that concept, um, we, we can basically reach a lot and we have already started to put that concept in place and we are actively cleaning up all around the world in, uh, in several uh, uh, countries. Um, the international cleanup for the, um, uh, for, for the Nile was basically a very good example of that. And I can only, um, I can only um, say that uh, David Attenborough, well, I, I can't add anything to David Attenborough, obviously, but um, uh, I, I just have to say it's exactly what we have to do. Um, he's exactly right. We have to, um, to join up. We have to connect. We have to do actions. Uh, we have to do it right now, and we have to do it um, as a group, as a group effort in order to reach big things. And this international cleanup is a, a perfect example for that. Um, Barry Nile and One Earth, One Ocean is working together already since quite a few years. And um, together they have achieved, uh, they have achieved um, quite something in, uh, in, in Africa. And uh, this cooperation will, of course, uh, uh, keep growing. And uh, this is a very good example for it. So on our little banner, we can see that a lot of, co that a lot of um, organizations have worked together on that very same day. Um, to free the world of tons of plastic. And yeah, as I said, this, this is what we have to do again and again. And this is what, uh, what the future hopefully looks like, that more and more organizations will join and help us to achieve 
the seemingly impossible. In Manila, here in the Philippines, um, we did actually two cleanups together with the Marine Police. Um, it, uh, both of them happened at the Las Piñas uh, Parña Critical Habitat. And uh, we attended both of them and also the Marine Police attended both of them. In fact, the first cleanup we did on the 11th of March uh, was basically um, uh, organized by the Marine Police. And it was a coincidence that I came to them like only, really only a couple of days before. Um, I was invited to the office of the commander of the Third Special Operations Unit. And uh, he invited us to join. And I was asking him if they would also like us to join uh, for this international cleanup action. And they were uh, completely excited and said, yes, absolutely. And if we, can, uh, if we can help you for your cleanup action on the 13th of March, then you will get additional staff from us, which they did. They literally asked me how much staff <laughs> I would like to have. <laughs> so it's overwhelming. Um, uh, the contribution, what they did is overwhelming. Um, and it was a great uh, group effort. Um, yes, but it was not only uh, the Marine Police which joined this action. It was also um, the Coast Guard, the DENR, which is the um, environmental uh, the Department for Environmental Na Nature uh, and Resources, and the CENRO, which is basically a department which uh, is responsible for cleaning up and recycling the garbage. Of course, us, one of one ocean, then the PCC is the Parnyak City College. We closely work together with schools uh, here in Manila. Uh, one of the, uh, one, the biggest part for us here in Manila and the most important part is, of course, education, uh, because that's the only way we can sustainably stop uh, people from uh, polluting uh, the oceans and uh, also the communities around here are involved. In that case, it was the Dongalo community, which is very close to um, the Las Pinas Parniak city, uh, critical hab habitat. Um, nationwide on that day, there was 1,400 bags um, uh, collected. This, we used, uh, um, used rice bags in order to, uh, to transport uh, the marine litter. Uh, all in, that was about 15 tons of marine litter alone on that week. And um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's amazing how much uh, litter you can, you can gather within one day if you only have enough hands helping you. Um, on 13th of March, we again went there again to the same area and uh, we gathered another 1,200 kilograms um, of marine litter. Um, again, a lot of parties have been included there as well. Um, also, we did actions in, um, hang on a second, I need to remove that here, otherwise we can't see it. In Phnom Penh, well, in, in, in Cambodia, in, uh, we have uh, several cleaning cells, uh, which are cleaning um, up in Cambodia um, every day. And uh, those three cleaning cells, the three teams have basically joined forces <clears throat> on the 13th of March to clean uh, the Mekong River and also channels leading to it. And there was 2,380 kilos collected. And um, yeah, it's uh, again, uh, it's, it's really amazing what, what one can do um, if you only have uh, enough hands to help you. Also, of course, we had um, a little project at the uh, river in Indonesia. Um, almost 500 kilos have been uh, gathered there. And in Kiel, Germany, um, we had our divers. The, um, the SDA is sports divers. They recovered about half a ton of rubbish. Uh, we work together with them very often, too, especially in Germany. And also last year, we have been uh, together in Denmark uh, with the Sea Cow 1 and our new ship, um, the Circular Explorer. And uh, yeah, so we are experienced working together with them and it is uh, really nice to, to see them joining the action as well. Uh, from my side, that's already it. <laughs> I, I excuse um, the, uh, the simple presentation. <laughs> I didn't have much time to prepare it as I was really busy with the Circular Explorer. <laughs> Thank you very much, fantastic. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, very busy, amazing, amazing, uh, amazing organization, One Earth, One Ocean. We're so happy to be 
uh, talking about getting things going here in in Malaysia now and joining the uh, joining the the coalition global coalition. Um, with that said, I think we might pass on to. How about we pass on to Joseph? Joseph, are you uh, up for for presenting next? Presenting your your organization story. Hello, Joseph. Joseph, uh, uh, Mr. Mongo, um, from Burundi. From Burundi, sorry. Yeah, I hear you. I, we can hear you. Yeah. So, thank you uh, to meet you all. I am sorry for my English because uh, here we use uh, mostly French. But uh, I can try. So my organization is uh, called ABN. In French, it's uh, Association Burundaise for the Protection of Nature, Burundian Association for the Protection of Nature. It has been uh, established in uh, 1999, but uh, agreed uh, by the Minister of Interior in 2000. So our mission is uh, to contribute to the protection of the nature and uh, to use equitably the natural resources. So maybe I can share the presentation to see what uh, we have uh, done. In, uh, in March, with the the other organization in Nile Coalition. Sorry, I'm checking the PowerPoint. Go to share screen, it should be possible. There you go, that's looking good. Bingo. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Seems to have frozen slightly. Sorry, I have a technical issue, but technical with my issue. Uh, Here, the Internet is it somehow uh, very low. Internet problems, yeah, understood. The PowerPoint's powering up. Where are you actually now, right now, Joseph? What town or city are you in? Sorry? What town or city are you in now? Here we are, that's good. I am, I'm, I'm in Bujumbura. This is good. We can see this now. Well done. Okay. So. Okay, I was saying my... Organization is a national environment created in 1999. We have a vision to see uh, our country living in coherence with the nature through equitable and rational use of the resources of the natural environment. Our mission is to contribute to the conservation of nature with the sustainable use of natural resources and ecosystem services 
for the benefit of the Burundian people. So this is what we have achieved in uh, March with the uh, Nile coalition, with the support of uh, OEOO. We have uh, participated in the event uh, with uh, 75 uh, participants, volunteers. We have planted uh, 500 bamboo trees and we have collected uh, five kilos of plastic bags with uh, this was the ABN members alongside with the environment club or, of a high school uh, with uh, the administration of the, the locality. So this happened uh, in the Rutovu site. This is the southernmost source of the Nile, and uh, this is the place where we participate uh, in the, the event. These are some photos illustrating the activities. These are the members uh, participating in the activity, the participant carrying the bamboo tree seedlings. And these are, uh, on the left, there are uh, students from the Rutopo High School who were uh, coming to participate alongside with uh, the ABN members to celebrate the, the event of cleaning up the uh, nice resources. Uh, these are the participating participate uh, carrying in their hands some plastic bags removed uh, from the nine source in the valley so they carry the, the, uh, the bags up the hill uh, here are the amount removed of plastics uh, putting together so there were no a lot of plastic bags because uh, these uh, students from Rutobu High School participate actively in this activity of removing these plastic bags uh, these are the participants resting on the pyramid this pyramid symbolizes the discovery of the south, southernmost source of the Nile by a German explorer named Dr. Burkhardt Wardeka in 1934. So this is a uh, pyramid has been uh, erected to, to symbolize this southernmost source of the Nile we have been told with, by the guide, uh, the guide that uh, this pyramid, this guy who discovered this uh, uh, southernmost uh, source of uh, the Nile, has worked for four years to discover this uh, southernmost uh, source of the Nile. So this is a, a high symbol of the pyramid uh, regarding uh, the, this discovery. So this pyramid is related to the pyramid uh, that we find in, the, in Egypt. So this is what we have uh, achieved at that day. It's just a, a short uh, presentation. But uh, if I come back to our organization, we have achieved a lot of uh, projects regarding cleaning in the Lake Tanganyika, the second most uh, long uh, lake in Africa, as we are in the Great Lakes, we African Great Lakes. So, to, uh,
to be brief, I would like to thank all the supporters for to make uh, this uh, this uh, event happen. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Joseph. Great stuff. Great work. Love your work. Awesome. Very very cool. Very cool. Okay. Um, well, so we'll move on. How about we move to uh, Motumba, Faisal? How about uh, we hear, hear from you? Can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Simon. Fantastic. Uh, my, na my name is Motumba Faisal, uh, Director of Uganda Junior Rangers in Uganda. And uh, we are happy to join the rest of, of the world and everyone present today on the 13th March. 2022 for the International Solidarity uh, Cleanup event. So uh, what we did on, on the day, we carried out cleanup exercises in two locations. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to play a video to uh, give everyone a feel of uh, what, what happened on the day. Okay, great. So we happened to join uh, the rest of I'm trying to get the video here. Uh, sorry, guys. So what we do, we did two locations. Uh, one is Masese landing site and the eastern part of Uganda, uh, plus the source of the Nile uh, in Uganda still location uh, called Jinja. And on the day we had uh, a total of uh, 67 participants as volunteers to join us on the event. And uh, uh, we did, uh, we did uh, basically a beach cleanup um, in Masese Island. We did beach cleanup focused on, on marine litter, marine debris, uh, uh, on, 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 on the lake shores of Lake Victoria and uh, Masese Island is part of, those are the headwaters of, of, of River Nile uh, in Uganda. And this uh, second event was held at right at the source of the River Nile in Uganda. And uh, on, on uh, source of the River Nile, what we did, we did, it has a slopey banks. What we did, it's uh, hugely littered with plastic waste. And uh, what we, uh, we managed to, uh, they use ropes uh, to try, uh, basically because of the sloppy nature of, 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 of the site, we, 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 we had to use ropes. I don't know if everyone is seeing my screen now. Yes, coming up now. Yes. So uh, basically screen uh, it tries to uh, give you a feel of, uh, of uh, basically uh, the state of things, the state of affairs how polluted the location is. This is uh, the screen. You're yeah, going to see a video of Matsese Island. I don't know if you guys are seeing it now. Yes, we're seeing this. This is good. Yes, so what we did, that is Matsese location. So we had, uh, we did a cleanup of uh, that location. That's the first location. Then our second location was the source of the Nile. In total, we had uh, 67 volunteers uh, join us on the day. And they combined, we did, we collected combined marine litter of, uh, in pounds, uh, 4,478 combined weights in pounds of marine litter uh, collected in two locations. And uh, basically, uh, like Ottenberg said, this is a drop in an ocean, but we try to play our part because if you look at the figures in the country, uh, basically the country consumes over 600, uh, uh, metric tons of plastic waste, that is the day, 600 mes uh, metric tons of plastic waste a day. And only 6% of that is recycled in the country. So uh, the rest ends up in water sources, uh, majorly because the uh, low lying levels of uh, majorly any uh, locations in the world. So most of these litter ends up in uh, uh, aquatic uh, habitats. So 
this video shows uh, uh, the nature and the extent of the pollution and damage that what is happening. So we get to pick up uh, uh, plastic debris, uh, plastic bags and bottles that are never collected for, uh, that has been, uh, it's basically, if you look at it, you see plastic has been buried into the soil. Almost it's um, most of the plastic you might think it is part of, uh, of nature or part of the soil. It buried, it's never been collected for so many years. So basically through these efforts, we are trying to uh, increase awareness and understanding and increase engagement with uh, and, 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 and collaboration with different local communities, educate them about uh, impact of uh, plastic waste, overall uh, social cost to them, uh, impact to fish regeneration, which directly uh, affects the income uh, 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 basically, overall generation of, of the fish is, is affected. So uh, little fishes uh, can be good from the lakes and overall it affects their income. So we educate them about these things. So, and when we open uh, uh, their eyes to the impact of plastics and pollution, basically you see they pick, they, 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 it's, they, they, they're, they're very excited about learning about these things and it shocks them the overall impact it has to fish regeneration and overall when this plastic degenerates and, and disintegrates into microplastics, basically it, it shocks them, uh, the health impact it can have to their children and to in the long run to, to themselves as well. So basically this is a little introduction of who we are and what we are trying to do. And the video gives you uh, an insight and all the feel of, of the extent of the damage and the problem we are facing. So uh, very happy to join everyone here today to share our story. Thank you so much, Mutumba. <clears throat> That's fantastic. That's a huge amount of plastic. What's the population of Uganda? Um, Uganda is 40, yes, 40 million now. 40 million people. That's uh, a... Yes. That's, uh, that's an amazing volume of plastic. Uh, well, well done. Amazing work you're doing over there. Great to see you. Thank you, Great Simon. That. Thank you, um, everyone. Moving on, um, if you we if you just unshare your screen, that'd be great. Thank you. And um, maybe we could pass on to uh, Mohinda, Mohinda Charles. Be great to hear what you're up to. Looking forward to hearing about your organization. You're on mute at the moment. Yes, thank you, Mr. Simon. As I've said, I'm Hinda Charles from Red Rocks. Do you hear me? Yes, all good. Loud and clear. Yes, please. Uh, I'm Hinda Charles from Red Rocks Initiative for Sustainable Development in Rwanda. Our organization started the, as a committee based in 2014. And then in 2017, we decided to make it a national organization. Where that's when we acquired the, the legal status of the organization. So as you have mentioned actually from the start, Red Rock supports community-driven environmental local conservation, as well as Arctic and the, its related ecosystem. As you, as, as you have said, actually, we are based in Rwanda, a northern province in, in a district called Musanze. Actually, we even our activities, we conduct them within the part of Uganda, which is Ksoro, DRC in the South Kivu, I mean North Kivu, and then in Rwanda, around the Venunga Mountains. Specifically on the waters for us, we work on two twin lakes and the Mukungwa River. There are two twin lakes, one is called the Luhondo, another one is called the Burera. There are twin lakes just in the, was created by the crater lakes. So, as I've said, actually, we have been doing so many things in conservation efforts, whereby actually we have our model of conservation efforts around the, those lakes. We use, usually, we, we, we decide not to be using the plastic things, so we have our own project for the women, the community themselves are the ones who prepare the, the bags, eh? the pot bags for the tree seedlings where they prepare them from the banana box, which are biodegradable and actually which are good for the uh, conservation of the environment. So 
this regarding our last event we had in the concerts actually let me try to share a video then i will talk a bit on what we did during that time Um, I'm trying to share the video, then I will talk a little on it. That's fine. We're standing by. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking promising. We can see uh -huh. your... Thank you. Carrying out. As I've, I, I have said, actually, for us, our, we conducted our activity around this Lake Rwanda, as you may see. Uh, we are on one landing site for the people of a very big island that is within the, the Rwanda Lake. So as you can see, that's where we have just landed on, this, on the landing site. We are just applying the T-shirts. And what we did actually during that time uh, we, we we planted almost 77, 65 different types of trees on the red side. So as you can see, this is the, Mr. Greg, he's the, the chairperson, then the founder and the chairperson who was briefing the community on what exercise that we, we have been going to do, whereby we are just protecting the water bodies of that Mukung Ruhondo Rek. And we managed even to remove almost the, between 25 to 30 kilograms of the plastic waste. Uh, you will just seen uh, among the video, there is a time when we'll be going to go and then we remove the plastics. And the other, uh, as you can see, we're just removing all water hazards regardless of the plastics. The racket thing we have in Rwanda here, there are some rules that prohibits people actually uh, residing near the, the oceans or the lakes. So it's an advantage because we, we have time to plant trees within 50 meters from the water bodies. Those are places that are not supposed to be habited. So it's a, a chance we have. In addition to that, after the, our, our event of removing these plastic wastes with the, on the, the, those water showers, we had also to conduct awareness campaign on the importance of water and the importance of conserving our environment. So we took, we, we got a good time with community, even including the local leaders. Addition to that, having seen that the water has so many things that is important for our nature and our human well-being, that's the reason why even we decided to, to tell the community to elect some ambassadors who will be uh, uh, conducting awareness always on that landing site informing the community, the essence of water, the essence of conserving environment. And even we supplied our local, local, local containers where people should be throwing the plastic bags, the used plastic bags, the used the bottles when they are running. We told them that when they are inside the water, they should not throw out the what? They should do not throw out the waters. Instead, they should do what? They should do, be bringing them inside the boats, and then they throw the, the they throw the the bottles, they throw the garbages within those containers on the landing site. Actually, that's what we did. That actually, where people were pleased with that those things, and at the end, we closed, having seen that we have done something that is very important. Even these days, we are having two events whereby during this month, we are going to have also another event of protecting Ruhondo Lake on a, another beach, where maybe we'll be sharing with you with some information or something that we've been, we'll be having done. Addition to that also, during the end of this year, that will be in September, we have a festival, a very big festival of conserving the water bodies within those areas of Musanza areas. In short, that's what we do. And we have been doing so many things, except that the time is not on our side, as we said that you need to take six to seven minutes. So that's Red Rocks. 
that's why the activities of red rocks that is being taken within the northern of Rwanda, but sometimes we cross even to Uganda and to Goma in the RRC, conserving water bodies and protecting environmental environment. Thank you. Fantastic. Great stuff. Love it. Amazing work. What a what a great um, range of projects over over in Africa there. Um, what we're left with is um, what we did here in Saba, and I'm going to pass over to Monica, who will uh, play a, a series of slides, about 30 slides, to show you what we did here. And then after that, um, we'll pass to Hazel from Track. All yours, Monica. We can see that. That seems to be working. Okay. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Simon. Well, that's a great, uh, good to hear and good to see how, uh, how the how one Earth, one ocean connecting the dot from every part of the world, and we Blue Hope are so great, so uh, feeling so amazing um, that we can be part of this. Um, global globalized uh, movement by one earth one ocean all right so what happening uh, we have we already heard what um, uh, uh, mr joseph mutomba and also muhinda shared from their part of the world now uh, let me share a little bit uh, uh, what we have done um, during the international solidarity uh, cleanup uh, and uh, together with the one at one ocean in our Bonio Saba as well. So uh, it's happened in uh, on the 13th of March uh, this recently as well. And in total, we have uh, surprisingly in the very um, short notice and also because of the pandemic, there is some still some rules and regulation and SOP uh, to be followed in our city, but uh, we, we can gather 132 uh, participants during the day, on that day. Actually, I have been controlling the participants. No, you cannot come, it's already limit. Sorry, I have to reject. I think more than 100 people was reject, not rejected, like put on hold, guys. You you can't, we can't take you take that much this time because it was not in the mainland in the city. It was um, a bit far from the, uh, from the city, which we need a boat to transfer all of them. So yeah, we managed to, um, have 132 participants and guess what the trash is 846 kilogram so yeah being part of this project uh it was happened in the gaia island resort It's about uh, 15 minutes uh less than 20 minutes to the island to the to the location where we did the cleanup it's about 600 500 to 600 meter long beach of that uh resort um, it was in the Tunku Abdurrahman Park, it's our marine park in a, nearby the city, in Kota Kinabalu city. Uh, so the location was selected because um, the study, I mean, the, the, the important um, continuous activity that we're going to have in that island uh, soon. So this site is near to the city, so that's uh, why we do this here because it's uh, uh, it will. This is the mirror and the condition of our coastline, so it's allowed us to do uh, more awareness and education for our community here in Borneo Saba. And these are the things that we. These are the point that we're gonna do some. Um, uh, organize are gonna implement some facility for recycling without complex waste, um, transportation and logistics. So, and also the policy changes. These are the things that we really want to implement and make it happen in our Borneo Saba. So, yeah. Um, then with the reopening of Saba, the plan that to welcome the tourists, which is the uh, Malaysian border is already open on 1st of April as well. So we wish to show people, show the tourists that 
actually we we are doing our best to manage and um, handle our waste management and our trash in our not only in the city but in entire Sabah. But of course, we start in the Gaya Island Resort, the Marine Center. So yeah, um, in geographically uh, view. Uh, these are the area with uh, and you see on your right hand side Gaya Island this is where we located and on your left hand side that's the beach that we uh, do the clean up on 13th of March and you can see some pictures before oh, before the clean up these are the pictures that we managed to capture and this is a situation when you do close up. You know, we in Borneo Sabah, especially in uh, Tunku Abdurrahman Park Marine Marine Center, this area, Tunku Abdurrahman Park Marine Center, Marine Park, we have a lot of uh, um, uh, marine life, very diverse biodiversity under the sea. We have uh, whale sharks a visit every year. We have sea turtle. You can, if you're lucky, you can see it every dive if you do a scuba dive and abandon of uh, marine life many many species of school of fish so but in another hand this is a condition of our our beach our area so it's quite uh heartbreaking when we see it. so yeah this is the photos we'll share some of the photos that we managed to capture during that day this is the this is um all our people over to the board and waiting to be transferred to the sea, uh, to the island. And this are uh, our board. During this registration, we have our team. I'm not sure whether you guys have a JCI in your country, but we have a support from the JCI youth in, during our cleanup. They wanted to send 300 volunteer. I said, no, we cannot take that much this time. So yeah, in, in the pictures you can see, we try to reduce as much single-use plastic as we can. So these are the food packaging that we use. It's 100% um, environmental friendly. Um, it's uh, bio biodegradable. It's made from a tapioca skin and also the bamboo spoon. Kids during the registration, these are the kids that uh, uh, underprivileged means uh, undocumented kids, but we we don't choose who you are. Everyone are everyone can come along to 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 take part on the beach cleanup. This is our banner designed by Mr. Simon and the team. Simon is the man of the day, giving all the speech and be a MC of the day as well so this uh, this is our leader um from track uh she's leading on the west management i mean west um data collection for that day kids is here this is the um director of naturalists of the gaia island marine center this is the event look at the view in our city in our borneo So some pictures and yeah this is the view from the from overview of the marine center we during this day uh, during the cleanup we try to pick as much as possible as much as possible as clean as possible that we can do we try not to leave any of the plastic bags on the beach but yeah we can't do it 110 percent but doing the best all right, this is the marine center where we, you can see in the picture that's the rescue or sea turtle. And yeah, this is a group photo. Some of the funny pictures, happy, happy people, happy day, happy activity. And we hope we can do it more, not only clean up, but more project with uh, one Earth, one ocean in the future. And this is the data collection that how we get 846 kilogram of trash and waste collected from the from the beach. Um, track uh, Hazel that she her team is doing 
amazing job uh, weighing all the trash on that day. Yeah. This is the closing. We are on the way back. We are the last team going back to the city, to the mainland. And this one is offload the trash that collected from during that day. We managed to remove it from the, from the beach, from the island on the next day. Yeah, look at that. This horrible, so much, so much to, to remove. Yeah. And yeah, this is our city. This is our backyard. Off to the truck and to the storage. This is our t-shirt and we hope more people to join in the future. Maybe soon, next month. And yeah, that's all from me. Thank you so much. Thanks, Monica. That's um, great. So I, mean, I think the, from our perspective, we're... Monica and I and our team are very uh, ocean centric, um, very much using Blue Hope is, 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 is talking about protecting the ocean. Um, Congratulations, Simon and Monica. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's just congratulations the to all of us. Then congratulations all, all, all to, us. to <laughs> one Earth, one ocean that bring us together. <laughs> we're, we're all yeah, in this all, together. All uh, in great this work. Together. Thanks a lot, Daniel. Pass on our message to everyone there. Yeah. And I think we'll, we'll pass to Hazel in a minute to talk about more of the research. And, and what I'm kind of, what we're trying to do now is to get the world um, starting to count for plastic. You know, there's probably millions of people cleaning plastic every day uh, around the world. But what we need to try and do is try and turn that into something that's of value to people and incentivize people to keep the plastic and turn it into different products. That's what we're trying to do here now. But before we go to that, um, I'm gonna pass over to a close collaborator, friend, an old friend of ours, um, Hazel from Track, who is bringing the research and the academic side to it so that we can actually quantify. So every beach clean from now on, we're gonna be doing um, with Track and really showing the locals and, and the islanders what the value is or what it could be and making that a real tangible value so that people can actually, um, it becomes more, more less, less volunteer. We can actually start turning plastic into something that me is meaningful and get incentivized people. Over to you, Hazel, thank you. Thank you, Simon and Monica and the whole team at One Earth, One Ocean. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I particularly enjoyed Matumba Faisal's pictures from Uganda because they are so close to what I deal with on a daily basis. And it really, uh, definitely a solidarity cleanup that we are facing exactly the same issues on opposite sides of the planet. So I will just switch over to my presentation. Can you see my screen? Yes, all good. Okay, thank you. So I'm Hazel Oakley. I'm a marine conservationist and environmental educator. And I've been working here in Borneo for nearly 20 years, uh, predominantly on bi biodiversity and reef restoration. And I work for an organization called TRAC, which is the Tropical Research and Conservation Center. And our principal project, what we were set up to do was to plant coral as part of a, a large reef restoration project we have ongoing here. So um, our reef was totally trashed by bomb fishing. That is um, in the center of the coral triangle and should be a healthy reef slope. And as you can see, it's utterly reduced to rubble. Oh, and my best photograph has fallen off my presentation, but um, basically we stabilized the slope and um, restore the reef and by doing so we get natural recruitment and the way we do that um, is with volunteer divers this is an ecotourism project um, the work is entirely done by diving tourists um, um, one of the reasons track is so involved in, in this is because of where we're based we are on the east coast of Sabah, so the other side of the state from Simon and Monica, um, 
in the North Sampona Islands. Um, we are 45 minutes by the fastest speedboat from the nearest town. And um, we work on Pulau Pompom, -Pom, which is a beautiful white sandy beach tropical atoll. And um, from a distance, our beach looks as beautiful as anywhere else in the world. But when you zoom in, we have to do the daily clean. This isn't weeks or months of trash. This is one day, every single day. We pick up the beach. And we've been cleaning the beach um, for years. Um, since we started working on Pom Pom, we've been picking up the beach uh, and eventually we started counting what was washing up on a daily basis. Because we clean the beach every day, we can say this is literally the 24 hour record. So uh, what's that? The 6th of July, 51 straws, 32 single use plastic bottles, 31 bottle caps, two pairs of shoes, three lighters, and the weirdest thing was a pair of false teeth. And because we have this uh, daily count of what we collect off just 250 meters of beach, um, we can tell you uh, what our marine debris looks like over an annual basis. So shoes are a massive problem on my beach. 25, almost 25% of our marine debris is discarded shoes. But plastic bags is also 25%. Uh, diapers, 19.3%. And with this information, we can really start to value the trash that we collect and look at where that has to go and how we have to deal with it. So track is lucky because we have the time and the resources and the finance to bring the, our, our marine debris from the beach back to the mainland, pack it into a van, drive it to the landfill, which is full, and persuade somebody that we can just pile it on top of all the other trash. However, track is unique in that we are seriously cleaning our beach. This is my local village. And I can guarantee that if you dig down through there, you will find 50 years worth of plastic bags. And some people say, oh, well, out on the islands, no garbage collection. They don't know any better, yada, yada, yada. This is the town center. And here I am literally standing on a carpet of floating trash. It is sufficiently deep that I am not actually getting wet despite being in the middle of a lagoon. So what can we do about it? Well, we've discovered that if we collect the trash every single day, you can separate out that which has value such as the hard plastics, LDPE, HDPE, the glass, the steel, um, things that have genuine value to be recycled, to be sold, to be processed properly. And then the rest can be used in um, pyrolysis or compaction into construction materials or waste to energy. There are alternatives if you collect and sort and um, filter your trash as you collect it. So what we're doing with the um, Blue Hope and Saba Plastic Neutral is um, trying to establish um, a positive feedback loop where the financial incentive for collecting the trash with value um, pays for the collection and management of the trash without value. And as Monica was saying, as part of the um, international solidarity cleanup, we did um, a, a big beach clean on the 13th of March. Um, and they collected 846 kilos of trash. 
Um, it's difficult with that many beach cleaners to really sort your garbage. People uh, get carried away with throwing everything into the bag. It's hard to keep it tidy. Um, but we managed to collect 328 kilos of plastic bottles, which, which is an insane amount for such a small beach. And all of those plastic bottles have value, as does the 95 kilos of glass that we collected and the 59 kilos of metal. So um, more than half of the, the waste we collected, part of the international um, solidarity cleanup, has value, which would um, carry the cost of managing the mixed plastic and the other waste appropriately. That was quick. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well done, I hope Hazel. I didn't go over my time. Great to see. Great to see those numbers. That's the first time we've seen those. So, <clears throat> so that is essentially um, the the benchmark we're starting from, and from Saba Saba Plastic Neutral and KK Plastic Neutral. What we're looking to do is to do monthly beach cleans every month from now on that just increase in size, not only. Uh, numbers of people, but the, the areas that we're, we're doing. And so we're, we're doing KK plastic neutral. So we're going to do rivers, we're going to do beaches and the whole island. So Pulau Gaia, um, that is part of the Stunkel Marine Park, which has 13 beaches. And so what we're looking to do is later on this year in November, in, in June, uh, as part of World Ocean Day and World Environment Day, we're hoping to get uh, backing to do uh, a Tunkel Abdul Marine Park wide beach clean where we spend two or three days cleaning all the beaches for the first two, three days to a position of clarity and then getting the timing right on the next incoming tide, we can show people how much plastic comes in. And so we can show the islanders and people in Kota Kinabalu that this plastic has value. And it was really when I first met Hazel, um, you know, with the new kind of plastic imperative and drive for, for Blue Hope. And I was finding out what she was doing on her island. And she showed me the data when I heard that she'd been doing this for five years and it had been increasing, it, it just steadily increasing. It was amazing data. And if you extrapolate that data, we've done the maths and we're looking at around about 30, more than 30 tons of plastic waste arriving on Sabah shores every day. So 30,000 kilos of plastic arriving every single day. Now, we maintain that um, that will drive the collection of that plastic, but we're just starting this journey and, and we're hoping to, to share this information with the rest of the world, but with the One Earth, One Ocean collaboration we're uh, very excited to be joining. We're hoping that we can share this kind of, this concept and this mantra and try and um, sort of share that, that and, and roll that out and, and implement it in other locations as well. What would it take for us to, to get to a situation where people are incentivized to, 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 to collect plastic? You know, 10, 15 years ago, you would, cut your foot on a bit of aluminium or metal on the beach in, in certainly Malaysia and most of Southeast Asia. Now there's none of it around because it has value. Equally, if you look at the whole of the Coral Triangle, Malaysia's part, Sabah's part of six countries called the Coral Triangle. There are millions of kids walking past plastic every single day because it has no value. But we are very sure that within the next two or three years, as we roll things out and Coral Triangle plastic neutral, that will be like, walking past a one ringgit bill. And so people will, kids will pick up the plastic. So we're looking to kickstart collections through schools and education awareness is absolutely key as I think we all will agree. So we have a series called Rethinking Plastics um, by Ocean Generation, which uh, Sir David Attenborough has, has uh, topped and tailed with his, his wise words. And we've translated that into Bahasa 
uh, Malayu, and we're looking to roll that out in different languages across all schools. But we've got 1,000, almost 1,500 schools here in, in Sabah, and we are looking to roll this out at the same time as installing water filters to stop people, stop the kids having to use plastic bottles. And in that process, by the third film, we're going to kickstart a, a home activity where the kids go home and say, mom and dad, we've got to collect plastic. And the parents go, oh no, oh no. But they're not going to argue with their kids because it's part of a school program. And so that'll kickstart collection. And I think that's the same with just about any family around the world. If we can set, set up a collection program, a competitive, healthy comp competitive program between all schools, and that drives collection, adults are so set in their ways. And, and Morocco and I and, and Hazel can speak to people here and within about, you've all seen it, within about 20, 30 seconds, they, you've lost your, your, the person you're speaking to, their eyes roll and they're on their phone or they're just not with you. But if they listen to their kids, if little Johnny or little Anwar comes home and says, mommy and daddy, we've got to collect plastic and they're really excited, you're not really going to argue with the kids and, and it becomes, so kids are the future. And I really genuinely believe that that will be the case uh, globally. So it's all about kickstarting that, but, but education awareness is, is key. So that's what I'd just like to contribute to this discussion, but keen to hear um, you know, other people's thoughts and, and um, share information. So you've seen what we're doing here, but you know what would it take to kickstart uh, Rwanda plastic neutral, Uganda plastic neutral, and, and indeed, you know, we we we're looking to. I genuinely believe over this next decade, people will look back on this decade as as the plastic decade, and there are millions and millions of tons of plastic arriving on every beach, and that's here is we're going to make that the new the new food on the table, uh, particularly as people are coming out of COVID. Now uh, there are more and more people without food on the table, and uh, we're looking to to make that as a, a big transformation here in Sabah. So um, I'll stop talking now, but love to hear what your thoughts. Maybe um, Daniel, love to hear you know, what you think from Manila. Um, you know, I've spent a lot of time in the Philippines in Manila. Obviously, enormous plastic waste problems there, amazing, amazingly clogged up rivers. And, and maybe tell us a bit more about your circular explorer. I know that's keeping you busy, but it'd be good to hear. You know, you're close to us. You're part of the Coral Triangle. And I'm very excited about uh, getting you over here and indeed come and see what you're doing there. Because I know that with your work and your, your, your team and what we're doing here, we can get a really big coalition going across the Coral Triangle. And that's, that's uh, what, what we're excited about, about doing. Over to you, Dan. Yes, we are also very excited about that. And um, of course, to us, the Coral Triangle is extremely important as well. Um, there is like also a very interesting field uh, regarding marine pollution and the coral triangle we didn't even discover or didn't even understand the full scope yet for example there is um, a, a specific uh, marine growth on blast on plastic because it has a, a certain surface um, it likes to attract bacteria and viruses and funguses and with this bacteria with this so-called uh, plastisphere it is uh, likely that there might be uh, viruses and bacteria and funguses uh, transmitted from uh, one ocean to the other ocean, from one water body to the other water body. So that's something we didn't even have a look into properly yet, not yet. And there is uh, heaps of other, um, of other dangers which come from plastic. Uh, we, don't have, we don't even have an idea yet because it's, for example, too, too deep down below the water surface to explore it. Um, yeah, it is, it is shocking for me every time I see um, or, I, or I discover a new um, area here in Manila um, where, where it hits you in the face. Um, I, may, I may be able to show you a little bit more um, of my uh, photo collection here. Just a second. So... Oh, wait a second. Can you? It looked like it was a sharing and then we're, we're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went back out because I basically 
uh, went to the wrong side. Um, now. Uh, sorry, <laughs> not properly. Uh, uh, yeah, there we go. No, that was not it. Oh, where is it? There we go. Was hidden. Um, yeah, just to show you a little bit more, uh, you have seen some of those pictures already, but that's, for example, a picture I wanted to show you. It is just shocking what collects there in between the, the mangrove forest. This is this Las, Las Piñas I, I was talking about earlier. It is absolutely shocking what is what is landing there with each um, typhoon. I and can't, sorry, Daniel, I can't. I just see your screen. Can anyone else see the picture? Is, is, I can anybody see, see, any, anybody see a picture? See the screen. I can just see the screen, not your desktop screen with okay. Files. I guess my internet connection is too too instable. Um, okay. okay, I will just stop sharing in that case. Okay. Uh, yeah, what I was about to say, it's just like it is years and years of work, and we uh, yeah, I yeah, I, I'm afraid we need much more organizations to join, and mm -hmm. I'm also um, afraid that, that even that won't be enough. We need to. Um, activate all the people um, to to wake up. Actually, the world is waking up already. Um, David Attenborough said it really good. We have the chance to, the chance to change something, um, and we really should do much much more. Uh, we are on a good way, but we should we should do much much more. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, what we see in our professions. And I think it's a really good idea, as it happened uh, here in Manila on the 13th of March, that official authorities join the actions with hands-on work. I mean, in almost every country in, uh, on this world, we have laws which, um, which we have to obey to, which say that we have to protect the environment. But it is actively um, happening to less. So I think um, we should involve more authorities and more um, um, more authorities like the Marine Police or like the Coast Guard, which are protecting exactly the same, the environment and not only the people, right? Um, we can't live without the environment. So, those, so they should be more involved and they should engage in the same way as the Marine Police did here. And I think, uh, I, I hope that... Uh, there is some authorities changing, and um, and I hope uh, if that um, webinar is uh, being um, uh, uh, on the Facebook site, that maybe that the right person sees it and engages his or her team um, to uh, to join our action. So I really have to say thank you, Ilya. You you said thank uh, thank you, One Earth on Ocean. No, One Earth on Ocean has to thank you guys to join this action and uh, to achieve um, what you did achieve. I mean, that's tons, tons of plastic collected with bare hands. So yeah, we just need to keep going and need to do more in order to make the change happen. Thank you very much. Thanks, Daniel. No, it's a real pleasure. We're, we're so happy to be part of the, this international um, coalition and I think you know obviously a lot more talking to do but quite keen to get us an international solidarity cleanup going every month you know and just really each of us in our every way bring other people to the table and really get a create a global movement and I, I think you know I think we'll all agree that that's something um, that, that we've got to be striving for it'd be great to hear from um, from the others on on the panel you know, how, how hard would it be for you to do a monthly, are you doing monthly beach cleans, jo you know, Joseph and Mohinder and, and um, Motumba? I mean, is it, how difficult is it to mobilize? Are you doing this weekly, monthly? Um, you know, is it, is it realistic? Would it be realistic to, um, to do this monthly? Uh, everyone on that first beach clean, nine, 10 organizations, I think. And if we could try and make it 20 by next year and we do beach cleans every month, you know, would that be, would that be feasible for you? Be good to hear how, how, 
how challenging this is from your side. Maybe Joseph, if you start, or 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 Mohinda. Let, let me start. Thank you. Actually, for us, it's visible to be work, doing it on a monthly basis. Because even you have been doing even the tree planting on a quarterly basis because of the rain. But on the issue of cleanup for the water, water bodies, it can be possible sometimes, apart from the challenge of maybe funds, because sometimes you need transport, you need to, 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 to have water, maybe drinking water and lunch for the volunteers who have come to participate in the event. But for us, it's visible if we could be getting some retro assistance maybe to conduct those events. Okay, okay. How about you, Joseph? Would it be, would it be um, something that you could do monthly or maybe you're doing it already? So here in our organization, we, we visit Donacha every month. So if we have uh, some money, we can do this uh, monthly. And uh, it's in our purpose to promote it, uh, environment education in the high school and the primary school. So we can do it monthly if possible. Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. And how about you, Matumba? Uh, what we've been doing uh, um, a couple more times a month, what we do, we, they're based for surveying, assessment, and monitoring. Then at least once or twice a month, we do some cleanup. But uh, we uh, people are noticing what we are doing, and increasingly we are getting calls or email, people interested in working with us. So, so we are thinking we're starting to see opportunities and a big chance of uh, doing this basically developing a circular system that we will, will be in place to do this uh, daily. So there's some good news. So people have been noticing what you're doing and, and, and things are looking good. So hopefully we'll be doing this every day. Wonderful. That's great. Great news. Now um, it's 8.30. Now I've just been told by ADEX, um, man on the ground, uh, Elfrance, we could actually go on for another half an hour if we want to. Um, I'd like to have some, see if we have any questions. I don't know, Kushi, if you've got any questions coming in or if you've got any questions, but I've got a few questions of my own, but we'd love to see you know, if, if any, anyone else has any questions on the panel first, seeing what everyone else is doing, if you have any questions. I don't know if we have any questions coming in, Kushi. I don't know uh, what sort of audience we have now, it's getting late over here. Uh, do yeah, we have any questions coming in? There or, or? are no questions as of now on the Facebook Live. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Well, I mean, I think it would be it'd be great. So let's use this as a bit of a an internal but external great uh, brainstorm. Uh, we'll find out how many people are listening uh, uh, within the next few days once we see the data. But the idea from our side is that we. Certainly on the Blue Hope side, Sabba Plus and Usual, we're planning to do monthly beach cleans now and follow up with uh, a monthly webinar. So we have a strong, a close relationship with ADEX. Um, we've, been, um, we've been working together in various guises uh, in the diving world for the last 20, 25 years. ADEX are an amazing group, team, platform based in Singapore, and they have the biggest network of up to about 1.3 million divers and scuba uh, and marine lovers. So as the world opens up again, we're looking to, to do this on a monthly basis. Um, so with that said, it would be great to um, hear if anyone else has any questions or any other thoughts, but certainly Daniel, I'll be following up with Gunter and, and, and his team and yourself to see how we could take the momentum that hopefully we're going to create from last month from from uh, one earth one oceans beach clean and make it not an annual international solidarity beach clean but monthly and to really really try and get things going um uh, really really um up the ante on the on on the the plastic collection globally um what does any any other questions i'd love to hear uh, any other questions or thoughts? One question I have is about the amount of plastic and, and what happens to the plastic, but I'll stop talking. Hazel, if you, over to you. 
I just wanted to say how grateful I am to ADEX for giving plastic this kind of uh, global platform. Um, in 2019, they dedicated the, the ADEX dive show to um, plastics. And uh, I presented at ADEX about the difficult, about the potential for nanoplastics in the blood. And sure enough, um, microplastics in human blood was reported um, in the scientific literature just a couple of weeks ago. So um, by giving scientists and conservationists a platform to talk about these big issues that are concerning us with the general public, we, we managed to stay at least on top of the game, if not quite ahead of it. And I, I really would like to say thank you to John Lowe and ADEX and the whole team um, for giving us this kind of um, support. Hear, 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 hear. Uh, it's a great, great team, great network. And they're really looking forward to, to, to banging the drum on a monthly basis from now on, now that we can, now that we're allowed to take off the mask and get on planes and start doing things. Um, back to the other side of the world, or back, back to the uh, wonderful gentleman from, uh, from Africa. What are your, what are your thoughts on, on from your various perspectives? Huge amounts of plastic problems in your various countries. Um, I'm keen to hear what you do with the plastic, because over here we're planning to turn that plastic into meaningful products, furniture, building materials quite quickly. We're very keen. I'm far away, obviously, if you have any other questions, but I'm keen to hear what, what your plans are. Once you, once you get the plastic, what happens to it? Does it get put into a hole, a landfill, or is it shipped out somewhere else, or... Uh, are there plans to, to turn into something of more uh, value for the local communities? Uh, thank you, Mr. Simon. On our side in Rwanda, we have, uh, actually, with the moment you collect these garbages or these plastic, we take them to the correction centers, and then in the correction centers, there are some, there are some people who separate the, these ones that are biodegradable and done by the wearable. So for the plastic things, actually there are some companies that recycle them to, to get some materials that are used in home affairs, like maybe car, I mean, like actually they, they use them. They, for the, those ones that are biodegradable, they, they remove in fertilizers. And for those ones that are done, they move in some items like metals that usually are used in the construction materials. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Interesting, very interesting. Good to hear. How about... Um, um, it's, uh, actually, what is happening almost is mirrored here, except Rwanda, I must admit, they are doing a better job than Uganda uh, when it, it does into recycling or adding value to uh, waste. So, but uh, we're trying to follow in our footsteps and we are trying to do the same. What we do because we never had capacity to recycle, upcycle what we are doing, but what we did, whatever we collected would give to already uh, running recycling companies. But uh, from uh, before the end of this month, we have secured a collection yard. So what we are going to do is whatever we collect, we are going to store. And once we reach a certain uh, weight, maybe we are looking at a target of about 50 metric tons. Then we, we are looking at uh, through this time also, we are building partnership. We are looking at acquiring equipment, so we go the whole the whole process entirely and start transforming these plastics into our functional items, so we can sell. So basically, to build a sustainable program. Fantastic! Great. Very nice of our end. Basically, that we uh, we are in the process of uh, choosing them, so we are well, almost done. Uh, choosing them, but uh, we will basically uh, try to pick recycling partners, uh, which uh, also, of course, uh, produce building materials out of it. Plastic waste has an end of life. Um, so because um, if you recycle it too often, that's also questionable. Um, if you can, uh, if you, if you um, emit um, CO2 too much for each recycling circle, but of course, everything is better than um, putting it uh, into the ocean, right? So um, 
even if you have um, no other choice because it isn't recyclable anymore, um, I think it's 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 still better um, if you put it into an uh, into a modern um, co-processing plant than putting it uh, just back uh, onto an overflow overflown landfill or even throw it in the ocean. Right. Mm. Uh, we are very careful uh, uh, with our recycling partners, and we try to um, have it recycled as reasonable as possible. Building materials, of course, are an ideal solution, um, as it is always needed. Um, in order to build houses, you need bricks. In order to, there is um, technologies uh, to to induce plastic into that, and to, uh, to to implement plastic even as a as a product which. Um, prolongs the durability of the um, of the products, right? So it's a very interesting field, and um, also um, again there is um, a lot of recycling plants already existing, which are uh, in, uh, in for my thinking not um, properly used enough, and there is of course not enough of those. Um, so we also need to uh, to find out what's the issues with it and what we can do better there. Thanks, Daniel. I, I was expecting that. I'm, I'm pretty sure that Philippines and Melilla are going to be uh, on the front foot on this. So it'd be great for us to um, share share the kind of technologies and partners you've got, because this is what we're looking to do here in Sabah, is kickstart really a kind of research and development location um, to, to fast track real tangible value from plastics for the local communities. Because places like Bulao Gaia, the, you just can't, one thing you cannot do anywhere around the world is move it large distances. Um, and so the idea is to maximize the value and create a new plastic value chain. And that I think we can do that all over the world in a different way, depending on the local infrastructures and, and, and you know, what's going on in, in, in any given location. Um, Joseph, how are you? Do can you hear me? Are there any any other keen to hear how how you're getting on in terms of um, you know in terms of the recycling and what happens to the plastic once you've collected it? Is there a, is there a bit of a plan, or does it you have to put it into a hole, or or is there a, are the recycling is, is the t recycling opportunities um, blossoming over your way? Uh, here in Burundi, there are some companies who transform I don't know how to call it in, in English. They, uh, they call it Pave. I don't know if Muhindo can translate. <laughs> Pave to uh, and Mr. Jones, it's like uh, it, it, you, we, we, they made in some like it's uh, tails, tails for the houses. The, the tails, yeah. It's uh, almost a building material, but it's like tails, these tails that you are uh, put in the houses. Uh, some yeah, more plastic they, and the, to be tails. They use it uh, in, in front of the house. Uh, right. To, to protect the the interior of the the, the, the the building. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like an insulation. Yeah, insulation. Yeah. Okay. It's like a filler. Oh, so cladding. Cladding. Yeah. 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 So what we what we're doing here in Sabah, there are two technologies. Um, one is um, it's called they're both called sintering. And essentially you heat up the plastic, you mix the plastic or you segregate it minimally, but you, the exciting thing is that you can use all types of plastic. Um, not only, you're not reliant on the high value pet bottles and the harder plastics, but the laminates. So the more flexible plastics, which generally don't have a value. And uh, we're about to start a pilot of a new, of a new uh, recycling plant where we can turn plastic into, into the new type of MDF board or, or um, um, plasterboard, so plywood board. And so that is an incredibly strong 
uh, new table or, or, or school, school chair, and then you add, you add um, sand to the mix or cross glass to the mix, then you can create the building materials. So paving stones, roofing tiles, curbstones, uh, garden furniture. So this is the journey we're about to start here. And it's not, it's not high tech, this is low tech. Um, you know, there are locations in Timor-Leste, there's a location where they've been doing this for two years uh, and you know, three high school dropouts have been running it and they are now the expert plastic recyclers and 50,000 paving stones are now lining the, the, uh, the American and the Australian embassy. So this is the exciting thing is that this, we can get this going. You don't need highly skilled people. This is something that can be done relatively small capex to get the whole thing going and very quickly then you're creating product which can be used on the location and i'm pretty sure that this there are going to be variations variations of this that can be used all over the world um, in, in all the countries that we represent on this on this panel um daniel just back to um the philippines if i may since i'm coming from uh, I'm kind of very keen to, to more move forward with the whole coral triangle plastic neutral story. Um, what, what kind of, what would it take to, to kickstart a, a, a sort of a plastic neutral movement in the Philippines? Obviously you've got seven odd thousand islands there and it's broken into lots of different, you know, are there certain areas, obviously Manila is a hotspot because it's a capital city. But if you were to wave a magic wand and, and start, you know, what we started, I started off trying to get Malaysia plastic usual going three years ago with a British technology and then COVID uh, kind of stopped that, halted that process. And so we honed in on Staba being the most biodiverse location. But if you say, if we said, okay, let's look at one of the more biodiverse or frontier locations in the Philippines, like Palawan, you know, where we, if it was your money, where would you say would be a great place to replicate or roll out our plastic neutral movement into the Philippines? Would it be with you from, from Manila and we start from the, city, from the city center or do you think we could look at different locations within, out, out on the more frontier locations? That would be a better strategy. Yeah, I think out of the more frontier locations would definitely be uh, the better strategy, strategy. And I would even agree that Palawan is a really nice place to start. Uh, for reasons. Um, there is a beautiful nature and a, uh, and a large biodiversity which needs to uh, be protected. Also, we have unfortunately a similar problem with um, uh, um, ah, <laughs> sorry, I'm missing a word here uh, with explosives when they're fishing with dynamite. dynamite fishing. We unfortunately have the same problem here. I even experienced it when I was diving uh, in Batog Island. And um, so, and now when we, uh, in, in Subic Bay, we did a little boat trip and uh, the captain there told us as well, unfortunately, there is a lot of dynamite fishing. Um, yeah, so it would, I think, be a very good, uh, a really good point to start in Palawan or Bohol. Uh, the Bohol region was hit by the last uh, typhoon uh, very much, and they are about to uh, build up everything from scratch uh, new. Uh, and they try to have a new normal, a more green normal as well. So that might be a good, uh, yeah, a good point um, to to enter it. Uh, and with such projects, you can of course draw more attention to those regions, mm. um, which are a little bit uh, neglected in terms of um, uh, in terms of help, as the bigger regions like Cebu get more attention uh, when they are hit by a by a um, typhoon. Um, so uh, for the smaller islands, for example, in Boho, um, there's a little less support. And with a, um, with a new action like that, uh, we could reach two things. Uh, we could have them a little bit more in the focus, and we could focus, uh, of course, also on, um, on a, plastic, on, on a plastic, plastic neutral way of uh, rebuilding the areas. Mm. Thanks, also, we could of, also, of course, we, we, could include, uh, we could, of course, include um, plastics or uh, building materials which are made out of recycled plastics. Sure. 
Well, glad you hear, to hear you say that because obviously, uh, I mean, Philippines is is unfortunately the 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 kind of the 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 place where fish bombing uh, is is the biggest problem. Um, six five six years ago, I was part of a group that found start stop stop fish bombing here in Malaysia, and we're about to start a fish bomb free Sabo and Coral Triangle. And the fact that we now have technology means we can show fish bombs going off in real time. So that's the stick, if you like. What we're going to say, well, the good news, folks, fish bombers would be fish bombers, could be fish bombers, is you can go and collect plastic. So we're looking to seed fund alternative livelihood programs because we're not interested in putting fathers and uncles in, in jail to trying to feed their kids because, you know, we all need to feed our kids. And if if that is the, the best way for people to feed kids, they've got no alternatives. And if that was the way I was to feed my three kids, I'd be throwing fish bombs. So, but I genuinely, we, we genuinely believe that plastic now presents this new opportunity with 30 tons of plastic arriving every single day. As soon as we get our new plastic value chain going, we can offer this as an alternative. And it, it's a very exciting thing. So certainly Daniel, I'll be in touch more about um, Palawan Plastic Neutral, Bohol Plastic Neutral, lot, lot to talk more about that. Um, but in terms of back, back to our friends from the African continent, what would it take? I mean, uh, Malaysia Plastic Neutral was, was sounding bonkers and, and Coral Triangle even more bonkers because that's six countries. What would it take to go for Africa Plastic Neutral or Uganda Plastic Neutral or Rwanda Plastic Neutral? You know, to... to you know, and, and would that just be too ambitious a thing to be going for? How could you break it down into something that, that was tangible and, and build from there? Because people need to, you need to be able to show a pilot. We're basically starting a pilot here, Kota Ginabali Plastic Neutral, but across ocean decade, we've got nine years now, just under 10 years to, to create Borneo Plastic Neutral. And it just happens to be the third biggest island on the planet and one of the most biodiverse. So. We've got a real wind in our sails now, but love to hear how you could take that model to, to the great work you're doing um, over on the African con continent. Uh, I think uh, uh, one earth, one ocean, uh, I mean, as it's, I don't know, we have uh, one earth, one ocean to, to, to thank. Uh, through the Nile Coalition, uh, conversations are beginning to happen and frequency. So we hope through this Nile Coalition, uh, we can we can slowly build on that uh, this momentum, then trying to create uh, uh, something similar. So well, uh, Nile Coalition is a good start. So thanks well, to Daniel and his team. Yeah. Yeah. So what what one of the the next beach clean after. In May, we're going to start a Rivers of Life. And so, I mean, it's all words at the end of the day, but you know, the Nile Plastic Neutral, uh, talking to Gunter about Mekong, doing a coalition across the whole of the Mekong, the third biggest island in, uh, river in Asia, the 12th longest river in the world, and it embraces each, it seeds, it connects so many different countries in the Coral Triangle, you know, Thailand, Vietnam, um, Cambodia and China, of course, but rivers are so important, of course, because they, the 80 to 90 percent of the plastic in the ocean comes from rivers. So rivers are another really important hook, and so the re the very gnarl and the great work that that has been has been kind of spawned through one earth one ocean. The rivers are a great another way to get get the momentum. You've got to embrace everyone across the whole river. And that's the challenge we're going to start embracing here in Saba too. So I think rivers is a great, either, either islands or rivers. Islands are great because whatever we do here in Saba, four to five million people, if we get everyone recycling and not throwing away their plastic and living more sustainably, that's fine. But you then got, you're then at the whim of everyone else on the island. And that happens to be 18 million people on the island. And they're now building the new Jakarta, the new capital for Indonesia, in, in Kalimantan. So we, we, we won't stop. We will not rest until we achieve Borneo plastic neutral. Um, so kind of the location, you know, it's coming up with a, a platform or a movement that works. And obviously Denal is an incredibly iconic 
iconic um, location, river that is, has so much history, so much culture, uh, and is, a, is another huge, great big artery, if you like, uh, artery and vein that, uh, uh, from Africa. There's a great, a great hook to get, get things going. I see we have a question. Um, we have a question from Harry Chan. Um, hi, Hazel, did you find much ghost gear? Thank you. Have you found much ghost gear, as in fishing nets, I guess, is the big, is, a, is, a, is, a, is another huge issue. How much ghost nets? I don't think we got any on Gaia, did we, uh, from memory, but, but what sort of percentage, how much of an issue is, the, is, is ghost, ghost nets, ghost uh, uh, fishing nets? That's a really good question because in summer and obviously the rest of the coral triangle, ghost nets tend to get snagged before they reach the beach. So they are actually a different problem that requires a different um, approach. We do get ghost nets, but they're not in the beach trash data because they have to be um, removed from the reef where we find them tangled around the coral. What we find on the beaches is um, smaller fishing debris. We get a lot of um, small fishing floats and short pieces of rope, but we don't get ghost nets washing up on the beaches very much. Yeah, that's interesting. So the the counter, we, we are, there are people doing underwater beach cleans, so the coral cleanups, and that will be something that we're going to be starting more often as well. But that obviously um, getting, removing fishing nets from corals is going to be a large part of that work. And quite often, even uh, around the marine park here, you go for a dive and you'll see uh, a net smothering a whole group of coral. Do you come across much fitting uh, fishing nets um, in your in your cleans, um, Mahinda and um, Ms. Uh, Ms. and and Matumba? Do you, are you coming across much fishing nets on your cleans? Hey. Thank you, Mr. Simon. Actually, on our side, we are lucky we have some policies and rules that prohibit such a thing. Actually, on the fishing area, in the fishing area, like the one we have in Lake Kivu, we have also a landing site which is in Gisei uh, and the Changugu in the Southern Province. But actually, the fishing nets, they are prohibited. No one, actually, the moment they have those nets, no one is supposed to throw the net anywhere he, he sees. That's a policy, actually they have cooperatives. Our fishermen are grouped in cooperatives and for them, they have security people for themselves who consider looking for those fishing nets. If a net cooperative throw the fishing net around, actually it's a, they are being punished. It's in the rule, it's indicated in the rule. So on our side, we don't have any problem of fishing nets thrown in anywhere, anyhow. Okay, interesting. Actually, I would like to uh, to know something. We we did some ghost net fishing uh, in, in Europe. Uh, actually, that picture is from ghost net fishing. You can see the diving bottles on the boat. Um, that was from Denmark. And we found a lot of um, gill nets um, on the ground, which were uh, basically, they, they, they caught on, uh, usually on racks or something underground, like a rock or maybe corals. Okay, we don't have corals in the Baltic Sea there. But um, so once the, once the, fit get, once the, the, the nets get trapped on the ground, it's an immediate danger for the fishermen. Is that the same if you have smaller nets, like for example, uh, in Africa? Because for that reason, it is somehow understandable that they have to cut it loose because otherwise they risk their lives, right? Um, so uh, we did um, uh, we did encounter that problem in, uh, in in Germany too. And what did what we did um, is we uh, we basically found that a website Ghostnet uh, Geisternetz.de uh, I think it's called. I don't want to say something wrong now here when it's public. Um, but um, the the fishermen can basically and all all divers all sports divers they can basically pinpoint locations where they have seen ghost nets and we then come with the CK1. Uh, and retrieve those ghost nets uh, from, from the bottom of the sea. 
So would that be uh, an idea for, for Africa as well? Or are we talking only rivers and uh, turbid water where you can't really see it or where you won't really discover it? But I mean, for fishermen, you could still apply that, right? Yes, uh, uh, for us here, um, it's a problem. I can sh I'm sharing with you a picture to see uh, some yes. of the recoveries yes. they've done. Sorry to interrupt, but we've just, um, I'm realizing the time. We've got about one or two minutes now. So um, that's, um, we'll, we'll end with this, this your, your, your feedback on, on this now, and then we'll wrap up after this, this point. Yeah, I shared a picture with you. Uh, I, I don't know if everyone is seeing it. Yeah, we can see that. Just you see. Yeah. Yes, yes. So it's a big problem and something we are into also trying to, we're working with. Uh, uh, local divers uh, to try to recover and try to monitor uh, the highest concentration of the debris. So it's a big problem, same problem in Africa. Sure, sure. Okay, um, thanks so much for that question, Harry, from Hong Kong. Um, we're out of time, folks. I feel we could, we could talk all evening about this. Um, so I want to say a huge thanks to, to ADEX, to John and his team and Cushy and El Franz for the uh, amazing platform we have. Um, and obviously enormous um, gratitude and big thanks to Gunter and his team, One Earth, One Ocean. Uh, you're the reason we're here and uh, very excited to, to just build from here and, and, and build a really big global coalition so thank you so much for all of all of your contributions best of luck to all your work keep the good work up amazing work over over in africa and looking forward to uh, to talking more and getting getting things going on a monthly basis with you all thank you so much well, thank you thank Simon, you. monica Daniel. thank you thank you thank you so much thanks everyone thank you bye bye Thank you. Thank See you, you all. Bye. Bye. You. Bye. See you later. See you later. Bye. Bye, Monique. Bye. Monique. Bye. Bye. Um, guys, let me just quickly wrap this up. So I'd like to thank all of you for um, taking the time to join us today. It was really inspiring to hear what you guys have been doing with marine pollution. And I wish you all the very best. Uh, we hope to see you guys soon at the September show of ADEX happening this year. And I think we've had one question that's already been asked. And if there are any more questions, we will let you guys know. And um, sadly, this is the last session for the day, but we'll see another interesting round of sessions next month happening on the 5th of May. So thank you all once again and see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Thanks, Take care. Thank right, you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. Oh, bye. Nice meeting you, sir.